what I am leaving in 2020 is. Hey guys, thank you so much for checking out this video, what I'm leaving in 2020. Now you may think, Spencer, what are you leaving in 2020? And we're going to get to that. But before that, I just want to give a big thank you. We just launched this YouTube channel and we have some subscribers, some views. And so it would really help me out if you would subscribe to the channel. You can do so. It's super easy. It's super easy. All you have to do is you click the red subscribe button that's right here. Or maybe, wait, or maybe it's right there. I don't know. I'm still new to this, but please, please, please subscribe to the channel. It really helps out. You like, you comment, let me know how you like this video. Subscribe because you're supporting the channel. You like the content that's being put out. If you don't like the content that's being put out, just subscribe because you want to support me. If you don't want to support me and you don't like the channel, why are you, why are you watching? But without further ado, here is what I am leaving in 2020. Let's go. The inspiration for this video came from something that I heard a lot of people say, myself included. I said it so, so much. I think we all can agree 2020 sucked. It was terrible. It was awful. It was, it was, it was awful. It wasn't fun. We were indoors. We were locked up. You had, you had COVID, right? You had, um, There was just so much that happened in 2020 that we all want to forget about. But what I heard a lot of people say and what I found myself saying was, oh, I can't wait for 2020 to be over. But the problem with that type of thinking is thinking that just because a calendar year is over means that all the problems in our life are disappearing. I don't know about you, but the issues and the things that I was facing in 2020 didn't magically disappear because now that it's 2021. Which makes me think that for some of us, 2020 actually became a scapegoat. It became an excuse. It became something that we blamed everything on, even the things that were our personal responsibility and issues that we hadn't taken care of. Now that's the T. Cheers. And everybody wants to say, hey, new year, new me, but it's not true. It's a new year but it's the same you. You got the same problems. You got the same issues. Well, gee, thanks, Spencer. Now I'm going to go jump off of a cliff. Listen, 2021 doesn't automatically mean things are going to get better. However, it can still be a year of growth and development for you, but we have to take ownership over our own growth and our own development. So the first thing that I'm leaving in 2020 are excuses. I don't want to be somebody that makes excuses about my life. Here's an example. All my neighbors had Christmas lights up. I didn't have Christmas lights up. Why? I put it off and I was lazy and then it ended up just not happening. I didn't have Chris, I didn't have Christmas lights for Christmas. I'm like the Grinch. My wife says, Spencer, why don't we have Christmas lights up? And you know what I said? I said, babe, it's like, it's 2020. What? That has nothing to do with it. I was lazy, plain and simple. I was lazy, but as if 2020 the year made it. So I didn't put up my Christmas lights. That don't make no sense. But 2020 got so much publicity in all the terrible events that was happening that we kind of threw everything onto it as if it was the cause of everything. So in 2021, as a leader, I'm not going to be making excuses anymore. I'm not going to say, oh, it's because of this year. I want to own my actions and own the results of them. I have dreams. I have goals. I have aspirations for the year 2020. I truly believe that this is going to be the best year of my life and it can be the best year of your life. But the thing is, it's going to be the best year if we start taking ownership of our actions and stop making excuses for the areas that we're lacking. You just got to own it. Learn to grow. Commit to growing. Commit to being better and stop making excuses. Plain and simple. Stop making excuses. Stop it. Hard truth. Number one, you're welcome. I just gave you it. Number two, what I am leaving in 2020 is division. Like, four divided by two? No. no, 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 no. Listen, I know that this is like a very touchy subject, but what I know is that as a leader, as a follower of the Lord, it is my job to love people unconditionally. In Matthew 22, 39, Jesus says, love your neighbor as yourself. Some of you might be thinking, well, Spencer, I hate myself. Well, that's a different conversation. But what I know is that God has called me to love other people. It seems as if we think scripture is saying, love your neighbor if they think like you. Love your neighbor if they agree with you. And I'm not taking a stance here. I'm not saying I'm one way or the other or whatever it may be. All I'm saying is on both sides, I have seen so much hate. We are to love everybody. Nobody likes a Karen. I am so sorry if your name is Karen. My aunt's name is actually Karen. 
I'm not talking about you, Aunt Karen. Care Bear is what we call her. I'm not talking about you, Care Bear. Love people. No exceptions. Love people. I'll admit it. I've been on social media. I've been on Facebook or Instagram or Twitter or whatever it was. And I've seen posts that I've disagreed with. And it is very tempting for me to comment or to troll or to say you're an idiot. But at the end of the day, I have to be okay and you have to be okay with people disagreeing with one another. Because unity does not mean conformity. I believe in a kingdom, not a cult. Is that too far? Was that too far? This past Thanksgiving, I was at my family's house. My mom has completely opposite views of me. Like complete, like opposites, complete opposites. And you know what we did on Thanksgiving? We laughed, we talked. Why? It's because we're family and we love each other. Too many people are looking first at what divides us rather than what unites us. But we have to look for a common ground if we're going to make 2021 a great year. I believe in having strong beliefs and strong convictions. I believe in discussion. I believe in talking about differences. That is the heart of diversity to have differing thoughts and opinions. But before you have differing thoughts and opinions, maybe find common ground and then work from there. Because at the end of the day, my loyalty is to Jesus. It's to loving people. That is my mission and that is my goal. But what I've seen, people are having loyalties to the wrong things. You have to ask yourself, what are my eyes fixed on? My eyes are fixed on Jesus. So everything that I do falls under that. That's why I'm leaving division in 2020, because Jesus doesn't stand for division. Everybody knows the person that's in that toxic relationship with the boy or the girl, and they keep going back to them, and everybody's like, why are you going back to them? And they always have the same excuse. Well, you don't, you don't know them like I do. And what they'll end up doing is they will defend something that doesn't make sense because they're loyal to them. And that's what loyalty will do when you place it in the wrong things. You start defending things that don't make sense. So when something is wrong, instead of naming it as evil, we defend it to everybody else. Well, no, but if you look at it this angle, no, no, no it's evil. In 2020, I am leaving division. Start meaningful conversations with people that think differently than you. And instead of attacking them, listen, use, use this. I believe that this year can be an amazing year for you. I think this year can be your best year financially emotionally, spiritually, mentally, relationally. I think that it can be the best year of your life. But in order to be that, we have to stop making excuses and we have to stop being divided. Thank you again for checking out this video. Cheers to 2021. Was that too much heat?